Hi everyone, welcome to the advent of code 2019 in Erlang for some ad hoc unedited video in a terminal only. Low budget, high design, mid lane insights, maybe this is day 9. And hopefully uh, for day 9 we will have something as fun as day 8 was, uh, which was related to just printing stuff. Uh, so we're going to see what we get day 9, because finally up to date again. Uh, you just said goodbye to the rebooted rover and left Mars when you receive a faint distress signal coming from the asteroid belt. It must be Ceres monitoring station. In order to log on the signal, you'll need to boost your sensors. Uh, oh no, not a boost program. Is it? Yeah, that's going to be int code, is it? Uh, while boost your puzzle input is capable of boosting your sensors, for tenuous safety reasons, it refuses to do so until the computer it runs passes some checks to demonstrate that it is a complete encode interpreter. Uh, I kind of agree with that limitation being done. I kind of disagree with me having to implement the check. Your existing encode computer is missing one key feature. It needs to support parameters in relative mode. Uh, okay, so we had mode zero that was, I guess, a pointer, point mode one that was a direct value, and mode two is going to be relative. Um, it behaves similarly to parameters in position mode. The parameter is interpreted as a position. Like position mode, parameters in relative mode can be read from or written to. All right. So far, so good. Uh, don't count from address zero. Instead, they count from a relative base. The relative base starts at zero. Okay. Uh, the address uh, relative mode parameters refers to as itself plus the current relative base. Okay. When the relative base is zero, the relative mode parameters and position parameters and value refer to the same address. Okay. For example, a relative base of 50 and a relative mode parameter of minus 7 or says, okay, that's the calculation. Oh, they let us play with it with an offset instruction, okay, of its only parameter. The relative base increases or decreases the value of negative by the value of the parameters. So relative base is probably some state we're going to have to carry around. Um, I liked initially having only the pointer to carry and that stuff. So that one, I'm probably going to stick it in the map, uh, along with the uh, possible default thing is, um, okay. If the relative base is 2000 and the value of 10119, the base would be 2019. If the instruction were 204 minus 34, the value at 85, okay. Also need a new few other capabilities. Sh memory should be much larger than the initial program. Uh, memory beyond the original program starts at value 0 and can be read or written like any other memory. So, okay, it's invalid to... So that's not too bad because we're using a map for the pointer and the coordinates. So we're already able to support mostly anything. We're probably going to only have to, um, you know, a place where I did a strict update where I expected a key to exist before I write there will now be possible to do with any key whatsoever. And I'll probably need to uh, put a default value of zero on uninitialized memory because um, it starts with the value zero. The computer should have support for large numbers. This is easy to do because Erlang has big nums by default. Here are some example programs that use these features. Okay, so I'm going to go fetch my, um, I think it was day seven that had it in code, the last one. Yeah, the heavy paints of the seventh challenge. That sounds about right. String to source. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go steal this entire program, but starting on... Am I not going to start it again there? I'm going to start with, yeah. Okay, run program is still there. Applying the instructions is going to be fine because the options I don't care about. I'm going to drop the kind of big parallelism I had uh, in the previous one. I'm going to make a little commented section. Okay, and now I'm going to go and uh, 
so the plus now is no longer that way. It's going to be... None of them are going to be strict in memory. IO still remains the same. Um, so the thing I'm doing right now with these is um, taking all of these values that updated memory and make them support uninitialized areas so that it is a bit simpler to do when we read out of bounds. Reading an argument uh, value with a given pointer, that's going to be it. We have to default to zero. All right, and getting the arguments, that's going to be zero here too, still within bounds. <clears throat> okay. So we are going to have new parameter types, I guess. Uh, here, this is going to be relative. Uh, I believe that was a thing, right? Uh, position mode, mode two, yep. So our little code with the divisions and everything should keep working just fine. Uh, the power of code was the same. And I added a new upcode called upcode nine. And that one was related to um, set relative value, and it takes only one argument, I think, is what this was saying. What is mode? Okay. Uh, where's the upcode? Upcode 9 is just a relative base by the value of its only parameter. So, yes, only one of them. Okay. So, this is set rel, which I'm going to. Had here apply instruction set relative and uh, this sh let's call it a the pointer p is still the same um, and here what I'm going to get is um, read argument of I'm guessing that here, what I'm going to do is set a map with uh, what is called the relative base. So it's going to be the rel base. And it's going to be set always. I uh, will expect the initialization of the program to set a rel uh, this relative base to a value. And the result will be map. Actually, let's make it default going to be safer that way. Um, so this will be relative base. Let's be explicit. Use full words like grown-ups. And now I'm going to return oops, yep, the map with the Relative base set to base plus can oh yeah I'm guessing that this is going so the question I have here is is this going to be a value a uh, uh, direct mode or, or something else but since it's the same upcode as everything else I assume it's going to have the same possibility that the relative one can be relative itself. So I'm just going to read the arguments for the map there uh, and do that transformation. And this will be P plus two for that one. So I've got this, I've got the operator, I've got the default set. Uh, I'm carrying the new results for each of them. The thing I'm missing is uh, adding here the relative value. This should be fine. Uh, those are added automatically in, oh yeah, reading the argument. Here is the fun one. Okay, and so reading the argument in relative mode of a value. M of a map. So here, what they are asking us to do is, it's the same as using a pointer, but they have a different relative base. Right, right, right. So maps get an 
map and now it's no longer zero the default is going to be maps uh map scan uh relative base which has a default value of zero And now uh, what I'm going to do it maps get and plus uh, it should be base plus uh, should be the same anyway uh, from the map or and if the value is unknown give me zero because we can be reading out of bounds why not so that should strangely enough be enough uh, yeah so example. And we're going to start the first example that they gave us. And it should take no input and produce itself as an output. So uh, how do I initialize all my stuff here again? Um, sourced and here the thing I did was uh, turn this to a map Let me... permutation search max was source to map I no longer need to do any specific initialization on these and then it's just about running the program which is just calling the run program function twice and I think I had the run program with the pointer set to zero in the map and you know what I'm just going to make a little utility function because I'm tired of having to do it all at once. Okay. Uh, so this one should output itself. 73 is the wrong line. Oh uh, yeah, that's bad. Uh, day 09 example and it runs but the output is now a message all right so I'm going to write a flush function that's going to give me all the numbers at some point but let's see what I was supposed to get I was supposed to get 109 1204 109 1204 minus 1 1001 100 Minus one thousand one hundred, one hundred one thousand eight. Yes. All right. Hundred sixteen one hundred one. Hundred sixteen one hundred one. Thousand six one hundred one zero nine nine. So this works. That was easy. Um, okay. Uh, this should output a sixteen-digit number. So let's try this little one. In an example, we flush and it outputs a 16 digit number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That works. So that was easy to extend at this point. Oh, should I put the large number in the middle? Yeah. So this is testing that we actually support the big numbers thingies. Uh, compiling running the example, flushing the result, and I get the big number 112 and 624. Oh, uh, yeah, 112, 624, no loss of precision. So this should work right away. That was a very easy fix at this point in time, I'm sure. Considering how things are, uh, we're going to get a nasty surprise where this passes, but everything else breaks. Uh, let's get my puzzle input. I will need to provide it the value one, so I'll do that right after the fact there. So priv day 09. All right. Um, 
so here uh, all right this is going to be uh, advent input day 09 run the program and uh, why not just write a flush output function actually uh, I'm going to accumulate the output is going to be a bit nicer so accumulating the output is going to be the standard flush function you might have seen um, in all the other Erlang examples that exist out there. So here, what I'm going to do is just IO then ac output over and over again. Uh, let me make this a bit nicer. I'm going to receive the output and after zero because the program is done uh, I return the empty list and I am done with the entire thing and so now if I just run this program I'm going to go back with the first one because the first one is a tad more interesting uh, because it should output itself And there should be accumulate output, and that's what I want to see at the end here. Let me run the example, and then yeah, I do get exactly what I wanted to have here. Okay. Uh, that's going to be that. The only th oh, the other thing they wanted me to do was to uh, set the input to the value one. So self IO value one I think this is how I communicate with my program I just sent it to the buffer uh, yeah, providing with a value one a series of check on the up code that will take the boost code let's see what we get and if that works that's going to be great uh, part one of course Oh, okay. I know what this is. There's a bunch of them here where I just assume that they would be parameters directly uh, as a return value. And I'm guessing that those are no longer always addresses. So I'm going to fix all of these to be... Here we go. It should keep working. Input R, so there should be. Am I using them any other way? Nope. That's good. Oh, here. Because now they are not always addresses, they can also be arguments where we set them. Uh, I'm hoping that they do the right thing and don't make me read a uh, return value from an unknown pointer because that should be returning zero and that's going to be really freaking weird. Um, so here again, read argument for R in a map, relative base, relative, and now oh, we're done. 203 comma 0. Uh, shouldn't put a single value. The boost key code. Now, okay. This is not great because it tells me that I get a bug in here. Um, one thing I'm going to do then, I'm going to go do a thing. And oh, no, not these. Um, I'm going to go back to the first day that we had an encode computer and uh, the thing I want to check is uh, retry the old programs and make sure they still run the same. So, 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 first one. Example program, let me find the big one we had, part two was 
Yeah, that might be interesting. Uh, those required me to set different values that I hated. But I can do that. I'm going to go read new source. Uh, they owe to the Earl. And I'm going to go look a bit into my map and figure a few things out. So for my few results, for my few results, I'm going to just keep this. This is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to take part one and just compare the two results I have. I'm not sure what the program to list thing was supposed to be about. Oh yeah, that was just to output the things to see what I get. Uh, okay, what I had that could be workable. What's the value left of position zero? Okay, I'm going to just use the first part here. As an example, so move over example, you got a new source in town. Uh, string, of course, the ints are here. Uh, yeah, I got something faster here for the temporary map. It's now the... And this is now string to source. I get a temporary map. The map is this. I run program. Uh, and here, what I actually want to do for this is output the maps get. Yeah. That should return me. What does that return me again? If I run the program, it stops with halt and it gives me OK. I'm going to just return it the, um, the new map directly for this. And I'm going to get the map maps get uh, at zero. What result do I see? OK, let's see what I get for this one. I get the value one. Hmm. All right. My puzzle and server was this, 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 this. Program place position one with the value twelve and position two with the value two. <clears throat> This is going to be an interesting one. Because now I'm getting back to debugging the very early programs that I had. Did I actually write them in the, yeah, in the example spot? Yes, source to map, yes. Run program, give me the map, yes. Just output me the whole freaking map. Let's see what we get. Unless the meaning of an encode program changes with the runs. And the value added 3716293. Okay, 3716293. So I get the right value somewhere. But I think, uh, is this something with the reading of argument that I have? I'm going to change how this works. This is a return position. This is not the reading of the argument. It might work differently for these. 
this one is fine. They should only be in a key position before a map. Yep. Turning the position, reading, that's good. This is a return position. Because for these, the thing that I did though was um, when I was reading the arguments, the thing I was doing before for uh, it was a ret arg. How did I call it again? I call them ret pose. All right. For return position, what I was doing before when I had the address n for these, I would just use and return n directly. So a position in an argument value, uh, an argument in a position in a return value is different from one in just a reading value. So this should be relative. I should never get a value. And that's one of the things that I had checked before. Um, and here, the relative base should be base plus n directly. And I think this map isn't used. You are right. Now, if I try this, day nine example, where's my value zero on this map? Uh, okay, let's get back to the example. Get a zero on the run program. Now I get the right result. Aha. All right. Uh, so now if I run day 09 P1. Ah, you got to be kidding me. It's still, well, I had 203 and zero. Before then, two or three years. Still the same result. Uh, well, at least I fixed a bug. It's not the right one, but it's fixed. And let's just make sure that everything is all right. That's still the right. And part one, two or three and zero. Uh, Let's get back to this one. Maybe I didn't read what I should be getting, and I should be having a single value. What boost key code does it produce? It should report noble function and a single value to boost key code, and now I have two values. Okay, so day one, that worked. So I'm going to go back here to, uh, not day one, day two. I'm going to run part two and part two what were they asking me to do on that one on part two they were asking me to uh, oh yeah i had a search to do on find the noun and verb that causes the input to what is 109 so that was 64 and 29 were my two values for that part. Uh, what was that one doing? Oh, I'm not writing the search function again. Day seven, I had these toy outputs, but those had to do with the search functions. All right, let's get back to normal day map, the temporary map here, no longer needed. This no longer needed. Do I still get the wrong, the right result on these? That was supposed to print itself. Uh, so, day oh nine example. Let's compare them in case I missed a digit and they're actually not the same at all. Because that happens. No, they're pretty damn equal. Okay. Ah, uh, so these test outputs work. 
as planned, it is garbage. Uh, I started these little cool advents of code to, you know, play with something that would be less frustrating than work sometimes. And you don't have to write tests. You don't have to be super careful with everything. You just output the thing and it works. And in practice, this is not the case. It's just more frustration that makes you not like programming all that much. And yeah, I do see the 16 digit number because if I do a thing where I, and okay, let's check. This is indeed, you know, 16 digits because I might have miscounted. It is 16 digits. And it outputs the right number in the middle. And boosted up code. Okay. So. I know what I'm going to do here. This might be huge as hell. Uh, whoops. I'm going to return the result and go dig in the map itself. I don't know if it's going to be useful. All right. Uh, 9.75 values. And one of them returns me 203 in there. So I assume that in there, there should be one that is named 203. Yes. All right, so here's what you, maps. Uh, I'm actually not going to debug the entire thing, but just want to see which address that is. There might be something with undefined values. So that would be at address 25. I do get this. Uh, yeah, I don't have the full program anyway. I'm going to take a short break, think about it, and come back with insights. Okay, I don't have a solution yet, but after thinking a while, uh, I've looked at, you know, these outputs and I get one output per opcode that might or might not be correct. So the thing I'm going to try is to, you know, willingly break an opcode and then see if it is the one that uh, gives me the wrong results or something. So here, for example, if instead of returning the position for that one, um, I just used again the read argument mechanism for this and I compile and I try it again, same output. So either this is the broken one, I don't somehow doubt that, or it's not the same test that's happening for all of these. Reading the argument that should be the pointer value of the final one. Mm hmm. Or they? Let's try another random one. Um, that should definitely break the smaller argument here and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. So now I got a different error code. And the question here is is the value that I'm getting here. You know what? We've got a little thing called a tracer. Uh, day 09, any of them, any of them. I don't care for the return value yet. Just show me what's going on. Uh, 
Oh yeah, scope local. Boom, limit traced. That's still the source to map fun. Oh god. Uh, I'm only interested in apply instructions. For now. Oh, that's a large map to carry around. So I exited. I should have output the value zero here. So I'm going to look until I find my um, output address 25, which is the wrong result I have. Okay. So up to here, that's kind of nice. Uh, lots of noise, jump if true. And this is the thing that's not necessarily true, what was happening there. So I'm assuming that this is what is making me skip to address 63 down here which was the output instruction. So address 63. Oh God, now it's a bit annoying to know what it has. 63, what's in 63? Oh, there's no space. Nope. 63 is zero. So it was uh, my jump instruction, cares and jump if true. If the value is zero, it jumps okay uh, it doesn't jump so that was false and I'm guessing that uh, I failed on this expression so whatever reads from address 63 is what is going to be my bad instruction I guess um, uh, there is address a thousand equal to what is it? address zero and if not go to address 63 so that's a comparison that's happening first. So my comparison operator might be a bit funky here uh, because it stores the result in address 63. So what do we do with this one? Uh, this is actually more fun than I thought it would be. Jump if true address 63, so that worked. Okay, so I'm comparing here, so I need to know the value zero, what is in address a thousand? So I want to know what was set in address a thousand in one of them. And I'm just going to go seek address a thousand. That's still okay. You know what? Address a thousand sounds like memory that is kind of far on all of these. Address a thousand. My input is here in a given value. The relative value here is set to three. So I should have a relative base somewhere in there. Let me look at the numbers. Where's my relative base? It might be after all of these, nope. Hmm. Okay, so let's, there it is. Okay, it's set to a thousand already. So it's a thousand plus zero. Okay, I put the input there in relay and zero. It's set to a thousand, then it's still a thousand, still a thousand, still a thousand for all of these. So the value at zero should be what is address zero and put that in address 60. So what is in address a thousand? It's the value three. Okay, so my input here is relative, should go to zero. Let me search, oops, what I put in here for zero was one, and the next one after is, oh wait, that is weird. Because I put the value zero into one, that's fine. Then here, I should have what was in the value zero, and it's at 1102. But what made it go from here to there? Because my input Oh, oh, 
Oh. Here's the thing that might be happening, and I think I just figured it out. Uh, if I'm testing all the codes, I might be reading my output into my input because they're using the same thing, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, the output accumulator program is going to be different from the one I actually. So I'm going to run, not in the examples, the first one, because I'm sending this to myself right now. But this might not be the right thing to do. So this is going to be the program that I have. And I'm going to run it. That's fine. Uh, the thing that I have, though, is that I'm going to take this source of the map value here. I'm going to declare that the parent is myself. Because there might be an input operation that outputs stuff before what happens. So here, this is going to go that way. Uh, this is going to be a temporary map. And in the map itself, I'm going to... Oh yeah, that's fine. In the map itself, I'm going to declare that uh, the output goes to my parent process. And the output accumulator here, I'm just going to result the final one. I'm going to send it to the parent. And so here, oops. The result R is R. Because I'm pretty sure I was polluting my own IO streams by doing that. Uh, I don't need the PID at all. That's true. And that's not how a spawn function works. Thank you, computer. The parent is in there. I need to have a comma. This is going well. All right. Let's recompile. And run the part one. Oops. Yeah, so even doing that, I'm still getting the same problem. So that was unrelated. Let's undo this. Uh, that's too far. All right. That's a bit sad. I really hope that that would have been the right thing to do and giving me the 203 and everything like that. But so broken. So I'm going to take another break. Think about it some more. OK, uh, new avenue. I decided to do something where all, all I do is I, you know, trace specific calls. So I check that output. Uh, happened the right number of times. I check that input happened the right number of times. And what I'm checking now is um, that the operator set relative works properly. And uh, the guess I have here is that if it's the only new operator, there might be a case where it's weird. And um, here's what I got. Let me get to where it executed. And I got something interesting. I still get the result uh, 230. But here, I set the relative value to something that is, ooh, god damn, I get something that is exactly the right value, right? And here, I set the value here to the address, 1,000, and that might be fine. And for this one, I set it to the relative value 6 itself. And so what I'm thinking for these is that one of the, you know, apply instructions for these uh, it's being done on reading the arguments for uh, these and might be wrong. So I'm going to try something here because I've got the relative three. I've got the relative six. I've got the address. I've got a relative. Oh, uh, but it also asks for a value. OK, so I thought this would have been interesting if it needed to be treated like a return value instead of the um, actual one. 
but that doesn't seem to apply here. Unfortunately, uh, that's annoying. Okay, uh, is all of them in the right return positions? Jump if false. Oh, wait. Could this be? Uh, I'm thinking this might break too much stuff, but let's try this. I, I'm sure it's, it's going to give me a violent, fiery death in treating the pointers as uh, the wrong thing here. Would just have been kind of interesting. Yeah, same stuff. Oh, that's sad. All right. Because it would have been really, really, really fun. Let's try from a fresh shell. Yeah, so it's not the jump condition either. What else do I have? Uh, return position, return position, running the program, supplying the instructions, the new pointers. Uh, all right. Time for more thinking. I'm putting you in pause again. All right. So one thing is that uh, I've taken another break. I don't have an idea what the problem is. So what I'm going to do is clean up the program, the program a bit, and uh, give myself uh, a new pointer mechanism for these. And the map is not going to change on any of these like that and I'm just going to write new instructions that another uh, instructions but clean up the format in a way that I think would be helpful to debugging things so uh, I'm going to essentially just play with this right jumping should not change the map ever in what it, in what it does um, so I'm going to add a new jump instructions and for the other ones all I'm going to return is just OK, new map. And the new p value is going to be based on the arguments I have here. I'm going to explode this bit. And the new pointer is going to be p plus. Um, and hopefully this will let me, you know, clean up a bit better in between the instructions, the states and the stuff I see in the program being called, but not too sure. So this would just be OK. New map. No P plus four, no longer required, which would probably be good to have. OK, just the map. The output is going to be similar. That one is just a map to jump condition no longer needs. This one is always an unchanged map. So this is going to be what it returns. Uh, similar here. Jump. Okay, map. And the thing is, I should probably fail exactly the same way uh, if I broke nothing. So it's kind of a decent, this little test program is a decent way to do that refactoring, I guess. That's going to be fine. This is going to be new map. And I will no longer need to track all these pointers by hand, essentially. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Oh. Of course, P is unused in many of them. Because it is only used for jumping. Even for jumping, it's never required anywhere, I think. Let's clean this up. Oh, whoa. That's not the right call at all. Let's be careful with this. 
Because the pointer value is never relative on these. The jump is not a relative jump. Uh, no, it can't be a relative jump on that. That would be annoying. It could be. I hope not. Upcode 63, I broke something. That's interesting. What did I break by doing this? Oh, it's plus one plus length of arguments here. Because I forgot the thing. Okay. There's nothing to flush on this. Now that I have this, I'm going to experiment a bit more and see what I can get. All right, so I was looking a long while to figure out what the two or three was, and it turns out that just Rereading the output, uh, the, 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 t the stuff tells us it prefers to check on each upcode, outputs any upcodes in the associated parameter modes that seem to be functioning incorrectly. So, this is saving. This is going to save me a lot of time because extracting the upcode, the value was 203. Uh, that gives me the uh, upcode number three. And so the upcode number three is input. And my input seems to be not working properly. And it seems to be not working properly when the arguments are in, uh, the parameters here are in relative mode. So let's get to my input uh, for applying the input, input, input. Uh, I've got a return value here. Uh, I had a left. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Red pose, I think, was the name I gave it. If that's just the one small thing, that's a good news. I was so close. I just had one little thing that I skipped over. Oops. Uh, recon tray. Clear. I have too many clear traces. Now it's worse. God damn it. Okay. Uh, what are these now? Because that's a lot of. Uh, that's still. Yeah, put two. Let me export for a quick second my function to um, extract the upcode and extract the params. It is being called by instruction n. So here I can uh, day 09 instruction to on addition equal smaller than finally all of these are wrong okay that's a fun one and uh i'm guessing the final value here is clearly not an upcode it's going to crash when i use it but let's see how we parse this fun little stuff yes no upcode 20. all right so all of these are wrong But why though? Uh, that was fun. If I still run the uh... okay, but that's with a value value in an address again. Uh, the first one value value addresses nothing should have changed. Value value address nothing should be changed. Value, value, address, nothing should be changed. And the last one is 02. Value, value. Hmm. I'm not too sure of that one now. 
because those should all be fine on the return position, just returning the address and nothing else. This is what they get. All right, seem to be functional in the output. Time to think some more. All right, so bits of progress. Uh, I was looking at things for a while and the logic of the entire program seems to be right. The whole problem is when I um, wrote a little bit of code here, let me clean up a bunch of IO formats I've put in there to make sure I didn't repollute my output flows. And the thing is that the error code here I return the call um, plus value, value, and address. And uh, I was discussing this for a while on uh, a chat with someone, and they mentioned that the issue is always with the relative values, and so I felt that, yeah, it should be, but this is not a relative value, but the two here should be the relative value uh, that I messed up here. So something in my parsing of the arguments itself for the parameter types seems to be the problem. And I'm probably getting the wrong value in uh, my little integer arithmetic that I do in here. So I'm going for a brief period of time, do something like compile, export all, and just, just go to town on that one. So when I call the instruction for this one that way, uh, the thing I expect to be called would be the parameter types for this value at position 3 and 3. And that returns me nothing. That should be the last position. At position 2 should be the address. And the parameter type function... Ooh, let me put my line numbers again. Uh, here, I don't want to look into the kind of values that I get in here, right? So I should be getting this uh, parent types, parent types. So it should be extract param is the one I want to trace. And if the parsing was the little problem, that would explain a whole lot. All right, so day 09 extract param there with a value 3. Uh, so that gives me the third argument. <laughs> so that should be math bow of 10 to 3. That's if I truncate it should be getting the same result as day 09 uh pow 10 3 Ooh. that might be a problem so let's replace it with uh just this one little thing uh, if I messed up on the power function because I was afraid it would give two large integers and sometimes uh, back a few days. Uh, sweet Lord, I messed up on the stupidest thing. Uh, let's remove the debug information, the instruction here for debugging. Uh, well, it's still useful. I don't mind for that one. And here I get the power function is no longer useful. Uh, trying to be nice and smart always plays against yourself. All right, uh, here we go. This is fixed. The power function was wrong. This is kind of the really, really frustrating part of this. It's right. All right, let's get back to part two. This is a really fun and great one much enjoyment but yeah I mean if I'm 
going back here, it's kind of really, really fun that the power function is what broke and the telltale sign uh, that made me realize this is that when I look at this outputs, they all return me the value type for an address when I parse them by hand, uh, but they were all actually relative, but only for those with five digits. So three arguments per operation. The rest was fine. So once uh, someone pointed out that I was reading that upcode wrong, that was just like, no, that should actually be uh, a relative return. Then I figured it out because the entire time it was just like the state machine should be fine. And because this code worked fine uh, in the days before, it wasn't a problem. And the interesting thing is that it returned a one when it should have been a two. So it worked with five digit codes before only because they were either a zero or a one. Uh, but not this time around. So actually, I want to go figure out like what I messed up in my power function. I don't know. It's. It's been an hour recording. Let's try to see how quick we can get through part two then. All right. You now have a complete encode computer. I hope it is complete for real. You can log on to Sierra's district. You can boost the sensor using the boost program. Turn sensor boost by providing the input instruction to value two. Once run, it will boost the sensors automatically but it might take a few seconds to... In sensor boost mode, the program will put a single value at the coordinates of the district signal. Oh, so I'm not changing anything to my code. It's just about running it and hopefully it is fast enough to work. I am into this. All right. And the value of input is two. Let's see what we get. Actually, uh, day 09, part two. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what... <laughs> I know what this is, uh, the output accumulator here. All right. Uh, the value is this. It's just that it turns out to be a Unicode value. And uh, I have set my Erlang terminal to do support complex Unicode value for this. So this is the number in there. Because I put all the output in a list, that's the thing I get. All right. And when I submit it, it worked! We're done! In roughly an hour. It took me a bit longer than that and a lot of little breaks and whatnot, but it works. Uh, let's see. Um, advent race. And I want to see how fast it is for this. 232 milliseconds. It's not too bad. Uh, that's still in the wheelhouse for acceptable performance. Oh. Right, so this is it for day nine. I am now up to date this week. Uh, see you tomorrow for what should be day 10 of the advent calendar in Erlang, uh, done on a low budget with limited methods. All right, have a good day.